Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial on creating stunning landscape photographs using your drone. I'm gonna break this tutorial up into three distinct sections. We're gonna have a section here on preparation, a shooting section where we're actually out on location, taking some photographs, and then finally we'll be back in the edit suite for the post-production side of things. So to create a stunning photograph, a lot of work has to go into it. Sometimes you can get very lucky and just happen to be in the right place at the right time, but nine times out of 10, all those stunning photographs that you see, there's been a lot of work that has gone in to planning them, actually executing them, and then the actual editing to produce a final fantastic end result. And so the preparation stage is vitally important and there's so many tools out there on the internet that we can use, save yourself so much time and hopefully plan a, a really good shoot. So I'm looking at shooting some coastal drone photography and there's two types of shots that I kind of want to go and get in this session. One I think that might be quite interesting is a sort of bird's eye view of these jagged cliffs that jut out into the ocean here, this sort of like really interesting landscape. And then the second one is a more traditional sort of landscape panoramic view, but from an aerial perspective. So Google Earth allows me to get a really kind of cool perspective and I can move around and actually, rather than just getting a bird's eye view that we do with kind of traditional Google Maps and satellite, I can actually have a look at a flatter view and actually get an idea of what the scene might actually look like. So I'm pretty happy with this location. I think it's got all the ingredients and the potential for a really good location and could produce some stunning photographs. The next thing that I wanna do now that I found my location is have a look at how the light is gonna fall on that location. And I'm gonna use a tool called the Photographer's Ephemeris. This is a fantastic resource for seeing things like how the sun's gonna rise, the sun's gonna set, where the sun is at any particular time of day. And so I can use this and you can drop a pin in like I've done here. And this, as you remember from Google Earth, this was our location. We see you've got these lines here. This one here is where the sun is gonna set. And I'm gonna go out at near sunset in kind of golden hour, a couple of hours before sunset. So this is what I'm really kind of concerned with. The other one here is sunrise. And then what I can do is I can actually move the timer and see how the sun is gonna track across the landscape as we get closer to sunset. So if I just zoom out a little bit, what I think could be really good is that if I'm at this location and I'm shooting into the sun, so I'm facing west, that I could get some really nice light here on the coastline. There's actually this little island in the background as well, which could add some interest to the composition. So hopefully this location combined with the right weather conditions could produce some really fantastic potential for great photographs a couple of hours before sunset as that sun starts to track across the sky and just hits that land and really illuminates it. So we're here now on location. It's about an hour, hour and a half before sunset. And we've already got this kind of fantastic golden light starting to, to shine through. Really kind of beautiful, nice natural light. All the ingredients for some uh, really fantastic drone photography. So before I get too excited and get the drone out and get it up in the air, what I'm actually gonna do is just take a moment to have a walk around, survey the area, have a look at the angle of the sun and all the different elements that are coming into play and try and plan my shoot before I take off. Photography comes from your vision, not necessarily the gear you're using. So when I get to a site before, getting everything out and getting in a mad rush to send it up in the air. What I wanna actually do is survey the area and look at my different compositions, work out how I wanna shoot the scene that's in front of me. And obviously with drone photography, we've got so much more control and so much more freedom in the space that we can use and the area that we can fly around that it's even more important to do this than kind of traditional landscape photography where you've got a camera on a tripod. So what I really wanna do is just spend a bit of time surveying the area, getting to know it, working out what I think can work really well from the sky. I think we've got a couple of shots that could work really well here. The first is more of a traditional landscape shot, so a panoramic view. And then the other one is a bird's eye or eagle eye view looking directly down. We've got a really dramatic coastline here with lots of rocks and cliffs, and the waves are crashing against those, making for what could be a really good eagle eyes view so we'll give that one a shot as well what i'm going to do now is just go ahead get the drone set up and ready to fly and then before we take off what we're going to do is we're just going to get our settings roughly dialed in within the app 
So we're good to go. And so we're maximizing the amount of flight time that we've got. One really important thing, in, and I've done it myself, is don't ever forget to put the SD card in the drone. There's nothing worse than getting it up there, seeing on your device that you've got the perfect shot and then realizing you've got nothing to record it on. So always uh, make sure that you're uh, pop popping the SD card in, the micro SD card in before you take the uh, drone off the ground. The drone's now ready to take off, but before I actually get it up in the air, there's a few things that I want to check over in the app because I don't want to be wasting any unnecessary time when I could be using that to take photos. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I'm actually in stills mode rather than movie mode because I'm shooting stills rather than video. The next thing I want to check is that I'm actually shooting RAW. So I pretty much always shoot RAW and there is the option to shoot JPEG and RAW, but actually takes longer time to write this information to the card because we're taking a JPEG and a RAW image and there's two lots of data having to be written to the card and that can slow things down. So I generally don't ever need the JPEG, I'll only want to shoot the RAW. Other than that, what I'll just do is roughly get my exposure right. I know that I want to shoot a low ISO because this is a daylight image, I don't need to bump up my ISO. So ISO 100, which is the lowest that it goes, is going to be great for this. And then I'll just use the adjuster wheel to dial down the exposure to somewhere around zero EV. Uh, I'm gonna obviously have to change this, but I can do this pretty quickly once I get up in the air. So all that's left for me to do now is actually take off. So now that the drone's up in the air, what I'm trying to do is just finessing my composition by checking my altitude, by moving the drone around and just tilting the camera up ever, slight, ever so slightly. And then when I'm about happy, I'm just going to bring my exposure up because it's a bit underexposed. I'm using the histogram down here to have a look to see if I've got a balanced scene as well as my exposure up here, which is telling me I'm slightly underexposed, but I can maybe knock it up just a little bit more. And then I'm going to take a shot there. Now I'm going to take a picture of kind of what we look at as more of a traditional landscape shot so a panoramic view with a horizon in it and this is a really challenging scene because we're shooting directly into the sun here so there's a couple of ways i could tackle this what i could do is i could drop the exposure down so i'm getting the detail or as much detail as i can in the sun and the water but then sacrificing the detail in the land and shooting that as a silhouette and i'll go ahead and then i'll take one of those shots and what i can actually do is try and capture multiple exposures of this scene. And then in post, I can combine those together and bring out the exposure of the sky and of the land. So I'm just going to hold it about there when I've got my composition roughly about right. And I'm probably going to lose a little bit more of the sky because there's really hardly any clouds in the sky. So I don't have too much interest. The interest is more in the, the, the waves hitting the shoreline and the texture of the sea. And then what I'll go ahead and do is rather than shoot in any of the bracketed modes that the Phantom offers is I'll start off and I'll start, I'll bump my exposure up so it's two stops overexposed and I'll take a shot there and then I'll use my wheel on my controller to then take a shot at zero EV and then I'll bump it down again to around minus two EV and I can get all the detail in those three shots pretty much and the reason that i'm doing this is because the phantom's camera is actually on a gimbal and because we're reasonably high up and we don't have any kind of anything close to the camera even a, a fair amount of movement of the of the drone in the sky is really not going to be noticeable and we'll easily be able to align these images in post the other thing that i'm going to do while i'm out here is going to take a panoramic shot so i'm going to use the sun as my marker and I'm going to have the sun centered in the shot and what I'm going to head, go ahead and do is take three shots for each exposure. And then once I've got the three brackets of that shot I'm going to move the camera about a third of the way within the image so I'm going to move the sun over to the left hand side and I'm going to repeat the process and then I'm going to get one just for safety on the other side. Now my battery's at about 45%, so I'm definitely thinking about bringing the drone 
back to home. And you'll see there that we had about 10 to 12 minutes of flight time. And if I'm lucky, maybe I've got two, two or three shots off of that. So it really does go to show why the planning is really important uh, part of the, the process and that you really want to maximize your flight time as much as possible. So that wraps up the shooting part. The drone's back down away in the bag and I just had a quick look over a few of the photos and I'm pretty happy with what I've got but I'm looking on a tablet screen they're low res versions I'm really not going to know what they look like till I get back and have a look at them on a computer screen. So let's jump into the post-production part of this now and have a look at the photos on the computer. Back now from the shoot and I've offloaded all of the images from the card onto the PC and now I can start to have a look actually at the results of what I shot. And begin with the overhead, the sort of eagle eyes view and of the sort of peninsula. And I shot this in a couple of different ways, changed the composition slightly, so added in more of the land in these shots here. So once I've selected my favorite image, I'm gonna start to do my editing on that and I'm gonna jump into camera raw first off. And this is where I'm gonna make my initial adjustments to this image. The first thing I'm gonna do is jump into the lens correction and I'm gonna apply the lens correction. Camera Raw picks up what this was shot on. It knows it was a DJI Phantom 3 and it applies the lens correction for that particular camera. Can also then go in and remove any chromatic aberration and that's just gonna be the purple fringing. We typically would see that in high contrast areas. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna to start to make initial adjustments. I can see from my histogram that it's a reasonably well exposed image. I'm slightly clipping at the top end in the highlights. So I'd probably look to bring these down, bring the whites down. We can see in this area here, it's quite overexposed. So I wanna bring that down just to bring a little bit of detail back. And I might drop my highlights down a little bit. Probably gonna add a hint of contrast as well just to give it a little bit more punch. And I might even drop my blacks down just to add even a further bit of contrast. So what I'll then do is open that image in Photoshop and then I'll start to go to work and do the rest of my edits in that. And that's a fairly in-depth process for me. I could spend anywhere between 15 minutes to several hours working on an individual image getting it to how I particularly want it to look. I use a range of tools. One of my favorite set of tools in Photoshop is the NYX plugins. And I've done a video on these plugins. They're actually now available free from Google and they're extremely powerful plugins for Photoshop. Really fantastic for landscape photography. And so this is the image that I've uh, done some post-processing on. A range of adjustments, just improving the image and hopefully bringing out areas of detail that I want, a little bit of dodging and burning. And overall, I'm fairly happy with this. It's not a world-class image by any standards at all, but it's an interesting aerial perspective on a coastline. We've got nice detail here in the rocks. We've got this interesting lines of white water here as well. We've got some detail in the surface of the water and we've got this nice coastline with the sunlight falling on it so overall not too bad an image and i'm fairly happy with it so now we'll have a look at the panoramic image that i shot and this is a little bit more of an in-depth process these images require more post-processing work and combining them to produce an end result and what we can see here is we've got the various different shots of the coastline at various different exposure levels. So here we've got the one that was shot two stops overexposed, the normal exposure, and then the two stops underexposed. What I need to do is go ahead and open these up in Camera Raw and actually combine them into one single exposure. So I can do that by going ahead, selecting the three images, right clicking, opening in Camera Raw, and then just to quickly take you through the process, what I'll go ahead and do is select those three images, right click and select Merge to HDR. What that's gonna do is combine the three images. So this is a preview of the image and we can see here when we had the three original exposures, it's combined the detail of the sky from the underexposed image and the detail of the land from the overexposed image to give us a more balanced exposure and we can see the sky the sea and we've got detail in the land. Now you'll remember that I actually shot this as a panorama. So I actually shot three bracketed exposures for each camera position and I took three camera positions. So I've got nine photographs and we can see them here. Here are the first three, here are the second three, 
and then here are the final three and this was the one with most of the land in the shot so what i need to do is go ahead do that merge to H hdr process for each of those three bracketed exposures for each of the three camera positions and that combines the nine photographs down to three once i've got those three what I can do is then stitch them together as a panorama. And I'm gonna go briefly through this process now. So I've gone ahead and combined each of the three brackets for each of the three camera positions. And what I've got are now three HDR images. So here is the middle one. So with the sun in the middle of the frame, I have one here with the sun over at the left showing more of the land. And then I have one here with the sun on the right showing more of the sea. And then what I'm going to do is combine all of those three to give me a final panorama. I select all three of them, right click, open in Camera Raw. And once Camera Raw is opened up, I select my three images, I right click, and I select Merge to Panorama. So here's the panorama and it's looking pretty cool already. And what I can do is you'll notice that there's a slider over here on the right. And this is an extremely powerful little slider. This actually allows me to warp the photograph and actually play with the perspective and play with what's actually within the frame. So once I've finessed that and I'm happy with it, I'll go ahead and I'll click merge. I'll save my panorama and then I'll wait a couple of seconds and Adobe Camera Raw has now combined those three images to give me a panorama and this is an adobe dng which is a digital negative so it's a type of raw file so i can go ahead and make my adjustments just as i would with any other photograph and i can play with all my sliders and i can really start to finesse my photograph so i've gone ahead and i spent quite a long time working on this image cleaned it up a little bit and then i've just brought out some of the detail within the water, I'm really liking this white line of, of white water and the detail here in the sea, brought out some of the detail in the cliffs, the sun here, really nice warm light shining on the ocean and just tried to create what I saw at the time at the scene and brought that out through the process of image editing. So I hope that's been a useful look at the entire process of planning a shoot, actually going out shooting and then doing some editing. And so hopefully it gives you some ideas and inspiration to go out and use your drone, these fantastic bits of kits that are so powerful and can give us really unique and interesting perspectives that just a few years ago, we couldn't even really have dreamed of. Any questions or comments, please drop them in the comments below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, just hit that subscribe button. Thanks very much, see you next time.